Hey everyone, I am Mohamed Said, and this is the morning of September 29th, 2021. Laravel 8.62.0 was released yesterday, and today I'm gonna bring you the latest thing, the awesome things the Laravel team and community have been working on lately. So without so much ado, let's set off. We'll start with a new set of events that are triggered when your application goes into or out of maintenance mode. This change will allow us to hook into the status change or the state change of the maintenance mode to apply custom code. Imagine that you are using a monitoring service like Odir or like Ping Ping. These services notify you whenever your application is having issues. But while in maintenance mode, you might want to disable these monitoring services so you can make changes to your code or break it or whatever without being bothered by notifications coming from these monitoring services. And that's when these events become handy. Let me show you. Inside the event service provider, you can listen to the new maintenance mode enabled event to disable the monitoring by registering a listener that disables the monitoring. Also, you can listen to the maintenance mode disabled event to enable the monitoring. The maintenance mode feature allows you to update your application, deploy your application, or perform any kind of maintenance without exposing the application to the end user. While the application is in maintenance mode, it will not accept any HTTP requests and it will not process any queue jobs. During this time, any user visiting your application will see a view that's indicating that the application is in maintenance mode until the maintenance mode is disabled. Only then they will be able to visit your application normally. Next, we have a quality of life improvement that allows us to retrieve request input in the form of a collection. It comes in handy if you are expecting a, input, a request input to be of type array and you want to handle this array using collection methods. Let me show you. Imagine that you have an endpoint that's expecting an array of users and you want to filter those users to only have users that have score over 1000. And currently to do that, you will need to use the array or the collect helper, which will convert an array to a collection. And then you will use the request helper to retrieve the user's array incoming from the request, the user's array. So here we will use the filter method and provide a closure and use this to filter the results to only have users with score over 1000. If we return the result of this operation as a response to the endpoint, we can test that. We can go to our HTTP client and send a request that has a user's input with three users with different scores. And if we hit send, we will get only the users that have a score that's over 1000, which are the results that we expect. With the new collect method, we can achieve the same using a more fluent code. So instead of using the collection helper, we are going to call request collect and then provide the key name, which in our case is users. If we send the request again, we get the same result. You can also use the collect method without providing any arguments and it's going to return all the input from the request in the form of a collection. It's a neat little feature that allows us to write a code that's more readable and more easier to write. What do you think? Next, we have an addition to the testing component of the Laravel framework. Previously, in previous versions of Laravel, we had a test helper that allows us to assert that a given model was soft deleted. Soft deleted models aren't actually deleted from the database, but they are marked as deleted when you retrieve them via eloquent queries. Currently, or in this release of Laravel, there is now a new method that allows us to assert that a given model is not soft deleted. Let me show you. Consider this code. We have the user model soft deletable by adding the soft deletes trait on the model class and adding a deleted add column in the migrations. We can assert that this model was soft deleted using the assert soft deleted helper. So we call this and assert soft deleted and provide the model instance. Now let's run the test by calling php artisan test and provide the name of our test class and the test will pass because when we deleted the model it was actually soft deleted. 
Now let's restore the model after it was soft deleted by calling the restore method. And now we can use the new assert not soft deleted method to ensure that the model is not soft deleted. So we call this assert not soft deleted and provide the model instance. If we run the tests again, the tests pass. So if the model is soft deleted, assert soft deleted will return true. If the model is not soft deleted, the new assert not soft deleted method will return true. I personally needed this helper in one of my recent streams and thanks to members of the Laravel community I can now go and refactor my code. We still have another amazing contribution to the testing component of the framework. This time it's a new trait that allows us to refresh the database between tests only if the tests require communicating with the database. Let me explain this to you more. Previously, you would add the refresh database trait to your test classes to make Laravel refresh the database state between tests so each test runs with a fresh database. The problem with that trait is that it refreshes the database before every single test, even if that test doesn't interact with the database at all. This can make the tests take more time to run than they should. Now, if we replace this with the new lazily refresh database trait, the database will only be refreshed before a test that requires interacting with the database. If the test doesn't interact with the database, it will not be refreshed. This will save you a lot of time if not all your tests are interacting with the database. Only those tests that are interacting with the database will refresh the database before they run. Otherwise, you save that time that it takes to refresh the database. Another small contribution to the testing component in Laravel is the ability to generate past test files when you are running the PHP Artisan make test command. Starting now, you can add the past CLI option and Laravel will generate a file with an example test that you can easily adapt to write tests for your application in the past format. Past with the p4pen. Now let's move to an update on Laravel Forge. Forge allows you to provision and manage Ubuntu servers and deploy your applications. It also allows you to install and activate SSL certificates as well as generate Let's Encrypt certificates for regular domains and wildcard domains. Now Let's Encrypt's old cross-signed certificate will expire soon. However, Let's Encrypt already deployed some changes that service a combination of the old and new certificates. That way, modern browsers will be able to use the new certificate while old devices can use the expired certificate. The problem is that there is a bug in some TLS libraries that will prevent it from accepting this solution of including the two certificates, the new certificate and the old certificate. And this can make requests coming from IoT devices to your API to fail. Laravel Forge deployed a change this morning that allows you to choose between including both expiring and new certificate chains, which means you will risk breaking communication with IoT devices using your API, and include only the modern chain, which means some old Android devices won't be able to communicate with your API. Forge by default will generate certificates that has the two chains, but you can let Forge know that you prefer to install only the modern chain. This is a decision that you need to make before issuing new certificates. It depends on what your API is being used for. For more information, head to the official Laravel blog at blog.laravel.com. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something. Have a great day, happy coding and see you later.